Hi Libra, welcome to your mid-July 2021 general tarot update. It's Raina here. <laughs> Whoa, those are pretty intense. Pretty intense. Okay, I'm just pick an extra card. I don't know why. Just feel called to. Okay, hmm. It's very interesting because um, usually, you know, I oh maybe you can't see. Let me put this back a little bit. Usually, um, I don't pick an extra card if I get the Queen of Wands in the um, the outcome, but for some reason I felt compelled to do so. So the heart of the matter is the Seven of Cups, and this is a card of, in some cases, choices. Now, this is like classic Libra. I don't know what to do. I don't know which one to pick, you know, indecisiveness. But you have a lot of choices, and this is an important thing to, to let yourself know. It's not like you're just like this or that. There's multiple choices in your reality. And so you don't have to feel that limitation. It might be actually the case of the opposite, where there are too many choices. And it's like if there were, if, if the universe narrowed it down a little bit, maybe you'd feel it was easier to, to figure this out. You may be uh, really out to lunch. I don't know a more delicate way to put it. Like you're, you're really um, spaced. For some reason, um, you're you're not clear-headed. I'm trying to think what oh, where is Neptune in your particular Neptune is in the eighth house for you. That would be a difficult one. <laughs> Neptune in the eighth. I mean, um, the, you know, the eighth house is is one of the water houses. It's Scorpio's house, and um, you know, if somebody has their natal Neptune, Jim Morrison and his girlfriend both had Neptune in the eighth house and this opens you up to you know psych psychic entities I don't know but with the transit it might be a little bit less that way but the point is is that uh you may have um like this escapist tendency for some reason and sometimes these things can kick in because of you know conditioning i mean if i'm doing a personal reading i'm looking at somebody's chart and let's say they have the moon there or the sun in the 12th house or a, another personal planet or they have you know the moon in conjunction with neptune they they will have similar tendencies so this is this is connected to neptune and so um your thinking may be muddled you may be um being, you know, having your head in the clouds. Uh, sometimes this can this can point to substance abuse because a person is um, escaping the reality. And and you know, it's funny in my book, um, Anthony Lewis's book, um, Tarot Plain and Simple. I don't know if this is, has become a classic, but it certainly has been very helpful for me. And they said when he said when the moon is in the spread that that can be the case. Um, you know, I've known some Libras in my time, and yeah, there are some of them who have engaged in substance abuse that I have observed. And I think with Libra, when that happens, it's because when things don't feel harmonious in your life, that is so upsetting to you, and that is so. Um, disorienting that that can lead to wanting to uh, numb out or something like that and it's funny because I'm saying being in a state of disorientation and that's kind of what the seven of cups really represents in the past position we have the tower card so some of you may have um, experienced a very traumatic or sudden we'll just say like a very surprising event that probably shook you to your core and created this sense of 
you know, the, like the Libra scales being imbalanced. And I'm, I'm trying to think like with eclipse season, what where you know, where that could have, um, come for you. I, when I do these readings, I'm doing them primarily for the sun in Libra because it's not really, I'm tying it to astrology, but it's, astrology is a totally different thing. Um, astrology is based on transits. Um, there are, I, I, the only reason, you know, I'm picking this reading for Libra is because I chose to pick it, but with astrology, that's already chosen for me. What is happening in astrology? So, um, you know, if you're, if you're watching this for your sun in Libra, your rising sign could be anything. And I don't know how the eclipses, um, uh, affected you that way. And that is very important for your day-to-day -day life to know your natal chart. So I'll just leave it. I'm not going to just, I don't want to talk too much about astrology. I just want to talk about these cards, but if you have experienced, um, some kind of shocking event in the recent past, um, this may have led you to kind of check out a little bit mentally so that you don't overload your system because it might, and sometimes that is okay. As long as you don't, you know, veer into something like addiction or, um, you know, totally shirking your duties, that's, that there is like some, method to that madness to be able to do that now um yeah i'm i because i was going to say that you know perhaps for some people this tower event happened a year ago like it didn't just happen because i i think i said recent past and i don't want to necessarily say that because when i'm dealing with the past position it's influencing the current situation but that doesn't mean it has to be a recent event and some people who are, especially who are very sensitive, something that happens, even if it happens long ago, it can make, you know, an indelible impression upon them and they can just take, you know, whatever. But one thing, yeah, the other thing I wanted to say about this tower moment is that, you know, I always say something has to give. And a lot of times when you look back on an event that was, unwanted or almost seemed to come out of left field when you're really honest with yourself you're saying it was just a matter of time that was going to happen so even if your partner walks out on you or you walk in and they're cheating on you you can still look back later on when the dust has settled and say well you know we were not connecting before that and I I guess I was kind of in denial and I refused to see it The higher message is the devil card, and this is the card of lust and other forms of material bondage. So uh, materialistic mentality, um, being, being connected to somebody in a relationship for the wrong reasons, because of materialism or because of lust, not because of true love. Um, that's the higher message. So... If we are talking about relationship issues and this has happened to you, you can, and, and let's say that somebody cheated on you, that's just one example, you can look back and say, you know, I wasn't in the relationship for the right reasons. This relationship was not really on the up and up. You know, I can admit that now. What crosses you is the seven of pentacles. Now, this may be something that um, you tend to experience regularly. Uh, so, well, I can't say all of you, but it's really funny, Libra, because I just did a um, video for people who have Mars in the seventh house. That's the house that Libra rules. And it's like having Mars in Libra. And I was I was talking about you know, possible, um, situations of getting involved in relationships too quickly. The seven of pentacles in the challenge position can be somebody who tends to be impatient. Um, this is more characteristic of your opposite sign Aries. 
but some of you may have the moon in Aries. Some of you may have Aries rising or some kind of uh, situation going on with Mars where you're just very, um, maybe the moon square Mars or opposing Mars. When people want something, they some people can wait and they can be very patient and they can allow things to take their course, its course. And some people kind of push it. And so I want to, I want to encourage you to really, um, you know, um, you know, examine that aspect of yourself, because let's say you lost your job and that's what the tower card represents. You may have options, but you don't know if one is going to really pan out. Maybe one is, is, um, really um, calling to you, but you still feel a little bit uh, uncertain about it. And that's not a bad thing because we have to tune into our intuition to make sure that we are um, making wise choices. Maybe you're not giving yourself enough time. Maybe you're trying to push some decision that doesn't need to be made. Obviously, sometimes things are time sensitive, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about if it's not time sensitive. So maybe part of this um, muddled head is due to you kind of like overthinking things. And, um, you know, that's why you're not thinking clearly because you're not thinking, you're, you're thinking too much. You know, that's what meditation is. It kind of orders your thoughts. It doesn't like completely eliminate your thoughts. Then you would have nothing you would have no ability to to actually make decisions if you didn't have any thinking capacity but it's just like streamlining things what is coming in is the three of pentacles this is the architect's card it bodes well for any endeavor that you undertake um that is coming up because it is as the architect's card it is really um doing things methodically. So building that firm foundation so that you can have some kind of an endeavor that has um, substance to it, that has stability to it. And maybe you have, maybe the tower card, uh, let's say you're, you're talking about love. Perhaps you were too caught up in passion and that was so intoxicating, but it was disorientating. And you want something more stable this time around. The outcome is the Queen of Wands. And this is a card of being empowered. But also with the Queen, we have the water element. So that's very good for intuition. Um, the difference between the Queen and King of Wands is the King of Wands is like double masculine energy. And it's just like very young and uh, focused on action and self-empowerment. But the Queen of Wands is embodying the um, emotions, and as far as I'm concerned, the intuition, in conjunction with, you know, your, your sense of empowerment, your sense of confidence, all of those things. So it's helping you to be confident about your intuitive um you know, um, part of yourself. You know, it's interesting that the seven of cups is connected to Neptune because Pisces is a, is a sign that is ruled by Neptune and Pisces people can be very psychic, but they can also be like Libra, very, um, you know, questioning their own, their own, um, second guessing themselves and, and having a hard time making up their minds about things. So this can give you a lot more confidence in what decision, if you need to make a decision in the near future, that you will do so with confidence. And it always feels much better to do something and feel, you know, good about it than to feel like very kind of scared that you may make the, the wrong decision. Um, so I picked the, an additional card and I got the moon card. So another thing that I would say about the moon card is connected to Pisces, even though it's 
it rules cancer, but in, in the tarot, it's connected to Pisces. So we have this Piscean energy. Pisces and its ruler, Neptune, are really um, specializing particularly in two areas, spirituality and artistic pursuits. So if this is something that you have been mulling over, Libra, and you certainly, especially with artistic endeavors, you are right up there, okay, because you're ruled by Venus. So there's a definite connection there. But maybe you needed that tower moment, whatever it represented to you, to get you on this path that is really your calling. So I hope that this message was delivered to the right person. And I hope that you enjoyed this and resonated with it, everybody. If you'd like a private reading, the link is below. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.